Hi everyone, it is Hanan from I Deserve Couture. And for today, I decided to do something very special for you. So back when I was in New York, I went to the Thierry Mugler exhibit. So I decided to do a vlog. But when I was there, you know, like everybody's quiet. I cannot talk. I cannot explain what I know about certain pieces. So I just kept my mouth shut, got the footage, got all the info that I need. And now I'm creating this for you. So how we're going to do it, I'm going to show you the footage that I have. I'm going to break down a couple of looks that I find super interesting. If you've been following anything that I do, you know that I'm a huge Thierry Mugler stan. He's one of the first fashion designers that I have seen work of and truly appreciated it. So before we start, I might split this into two parts. I'm not 100% sure yet because there's a lot of pieces, there's a lot of dresses, there's a lot of information. Also, I don't know if this exhibit is going to keep going because it was in Montreal, Paris, and New York. I think that I'm missing one more city in between. But on May 7th, they closed down their exhibit in New York. If this exhibit comes to your city, don't walk run to see it because you will never see something like this in person i guarantee you with all that being said subscribe like comment send this video to your grandma your aunt maybe some of them know Thierry mugler's work even if they don't Thierry mugler is one of those designers that you can show to people that are not interested in fashion and they're going to be like wow that is amazing so let's start with the video we are at the brooklyn museum and i think you're going to figure out what we're going to go see Oh my god, yeah, it's him, it's him, it's him, and we're gonna... He is the beginning, the end, the middle, uh, the point of fashion. Going to go see Thierry Mugler. And these are my plus twos. Alfonso and Jose, say hello, wave. <laughs> and then like in the background is, is a sign. <laughs> <laughs> and he has a Joe Sander shirt, so I'm like, stand in front of the yo, so it looks like I took a picture of him and then it says, yo, Joe Sander, wave! <laughs> and this is me today. It is so hot in New York today, it's ridiculous. Okay, we might have taken a different turn because I don't think that this is Mugler but uh, let's figure out. So this is the entrance to the Mugler exhibit. Immediately as you walk in, you see his name and in the background is this metal bra with complimentary shorts that showed in his 1991 spring collection. Here's a picture how it looks on a model, but we're going to talk about this look a little bit later. So first, as you enter the exhibit, the first thing that you see is kind of like short history of Thierry Mugler and his brand. And to be honest, there were a couple of things that I learned myself, I did not know this. For example, one of the most important people that played a huge role in Thierry Mugler's life was Pierre Berger. Yeah. Yes, Yves Saint Laurent's Pierre Berger. So he introduced Thierry Mugler with the person that's going to eventually fund and become a president of Thierry Mugler brand. And his name is Didier Grumbach. So side note, I am butchering the hell out of these names today. I am warning you, I know all of them are wrong, but bear with me. He was a president of Thierry Mugler's brand from 1978 till 1998. Also, we all know Thierry Mugler for his exquisite photography, but in 1978, that was the first time that he photographed his campaign. He had a special relationship with celebrities, for example, yes, we know Kim, yes, we know Kylie, yes, we know Cardi, but before that, he had a relationship in 1979 with David Bowie. When David Bowie appeared on SNL with Joey Arias and Klaus Naomi, both wearing Thierry Mugler. Now, 1992 was one of the most important years for Thierry Mugler. In 1992, he scripts, directs, and produces George Michael's music video for Too Funky. Same year, he launches his first fragrance ever called Angel. And that's the reason why I'm wearing this shirt because I wanted to do something with the stars. This is not a Mugler shirt. This is Tommy Hilfiger. And 1992 is extremely important for him because in 1992 is the first time that he shows his couture collection. And he shows it at the Ritz in Paris. The most shocking information that I found is that he did not become a member of the Chambre de Syndicale de Haute Couture all until 1997. I was shooketh when I read that. In 2002, he withdraws from fashion and starts using his birth name, which is Manfred. In 2008, him and Beyonce get together and he designs costume for her tour. He also loved to design costumes for theater. And in 2019, he shows this exhibit, which was first shown in Montreal, Canada. Unfortunately, in 2022, Manfred Thierry Mugler passes away in France. Now that we have that out of the way, let's dig into a couple of pieces, and I'm going to take you through the show. So the show opens with his contribution to theater. In 1985, he designs costume for Shakespeare's Macbeth. And by the way, that was the biggest budget that anybody has been giving in the history of that theater. Since its funding in 1680, to design more than 70 costumes and accessories for Macbeth. There are also these sketches of the costumes that you can see there. I mean, his drawing is just like on another level. It is so him. And then when you turn, you have this hologram of a show, which is extremely realistic. And then as you walk in, you see the first dresses of this whole exhibit. And there are pictures of Helmut Newton that include Thierry Mugler's work. 
Talk about a match made in heaven. Thierry Mugler and Helmut Newton. Mm -mm -mm. It is definitely interesting to see this picture because when you see it on the wall, you just turn and the real dress is literally in front of you. So this is the dress for his 1992 fall haute couture collection. And it is a tuxedo style wool and satin suit. Now this may look like a regular jacket from the front, but then when you turn around, you're like, okay, that is Thierry Mugler 100%. Talk about opulence. Jacket on the back is a see-through and it's embellished with crystals. And this is how the dress looked on a model back in 1992. I mean, you can see why it is in a museum. Also the star earrings make sense. Stars are symbol of Thierry Mugler. And also, as I said, in 1992 is the first year that he released his perfume Angel. So next to that dress is a little more familiar piece and this dress is from 1999 Falcator called Le Meduse, like Medusas, I think. L-E-S M-E-D-U-S-E-S -E -E in French. Les Meduse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, French people are gonna roast me. So it is this symmetrical organza dress with the velvet skirt. And the reason why a lot of people recognize this dress is because Kylie Jenner actually wore it. And she wore it to CFDA Awards back in 2019. And if you ever wondered, this is how the dress looked when it first premiered on the runway. To continue, I call this dress a snow dress and I think you can recognize why from his 1995 fall collection. And this is how crazy his shows were. If you never saw a Mugler show, stop this. In fact, don't stop this. Watch that later. But the set for the show was on two levels. This dress never made it to the front. It was all the way in the back, never came down. And if that model looks familiar, yes, this is young Kate Moss wearing this coat. And it is a fitted velvet evening coat with crystals and embellishments. Imagine spending so much time on this dress just to have it in the back. That is crazy. Next up is this dress from his 1997 Fall Couture collection. And it is this embroidered velvet pagoda jacket with deep neckline with muslin crescent skirt. I mean, to be honest, I'm always down for a good symmetry, but when you add sparkly stuff to the dress and make it symmetrical, sold. This is how the dress looked like on the runway. The only difference that you can see on the dress are the sleeves because on 1999 one you have this white fur sleeve. Meanwhile on the exhibit one you do not have that. Now this following dress is from Thierry Mugler's 1997 spring couture collection and it is a fringed men's style pinstrap jacket and it also comes with this shawl skirt and it's adorned with jet beading. You see it like this but back in 1997 it was styled a little bit differently. In 1997 you can see kind of like off the shoulders that's how the model is wearing it revealing the bra underneath. In 1997 it did not have the hat. This one does have the hat and in my opinion it really matches the energy of this look. Honestly my favorite thing about this look are these beaded fringes because I can only imagine the movement of this dress with these fringes. Now we come to the dress that is probably one of the symbols of Thierry Mugler and it is familiar to everyone. It could be one of his most recognizable pieces ever. And we're talking about the birth of Venus dress from his 1995 fall collection. A lot of people just call this dress a Venus dress. Well, fun fact for everybody, this collection had 300 looks. 300 looks! And the show was for an hour long. Today you get 40 looks from a brand and they're like, okay, we did too much this time. And I'm like, Thierry Mugler did 300 in 1995. The dress is worn by Simone Gianfelici. Okay, I think I killed that pronunciation. And this dress is an homage to Botticelli's 15th century painting of the same name. There are two parts of this dress. First one is the bodysuit, which is in blush color and kind of see-through. And the bodysuit is embroidered with clear paillettes and pearl beads, which gives it this shimmering appearance. The second part is this column skirt that you see in the back, which hugs the hips and flows upwards into a clam shell shape. The skirt is lined with pink duchess satin with matching gloves, and there are three roses on this skirt. In my opinion, the pearls are perfect addition to this look. It is a birth of Venus. It is inspired by a shell. When you open it up, there is a pearl. Makes sense. In the original look, you do have pearls on the waist, neck, and the hair. And there's another one, which is a very small detail and it is on the belly button. The illusion of the dress is that it's supposed to represent an open clamshell and the person that wears the garment is the pearl inside of a shell. Now this dress became a part of camp exhibit back in 2019 at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. But I think the pop culture is going to remember this look because of Cardi B who wore it to the Grammys back in 2019. Her stylist Colin is a huge Cherry Mugler stan and we will mention Cardi B a couple of times through this video. Next up we have Cherry Terry Mugler's fall collection in 1995. It is this satin long strapless dress with winged neckline with jet beads and feathers. The headpiece is from fall 1999 though. But again, this dress has been receiving a lot of attention because of another celebrity and it happened in November 22 and it was Kylie
Kylie Jenner when she wore this look to the opening night of the exhibit in New York City. I mean, I can say whatever I want about her, but she definitely rocks this look. After that, we have this look from the fall 1986 ready to wear collection, and it is a velvet tunic with crystals and velvet shorts. Now, this is how it looked back in 1986 with these huge earrings that completely match the energy of this dress. These are actually not earrings, but it's more of a headpiece that has the earrings attached to the bottom so it can give this earring effect. This is something that is still used today. My favorite example of this is Daniel Roseberry Scamparelli, and especially this dress from spring 2021 couture. And it seems like Maggie is carrying the weight of this dress on her ears, but if you look closely, it is actually the headpiece. Now we have another iconic Terry Mugler piece, and it's a piece that captures the brilliance of Terry Mugler. One of the dresses that like you keep seeing on the internet, but then when you see it in front of you, you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe what's going on. And this dress is from his fall 1995 collection. And it's a long dress with the velvet sleeve gloves and satin skirt. And during the show, it was worn by Violeta Sanchez. Now, the interesting part of this look is actually the back. In my opinion, this is one of the best reveals in the fashion history. So basically, Violeta has this shawl that she's carrying with her. And as she approaches to the end of the stage, she turns around and then like you can see her back, but you can see that there is a part missing from her dress. And that part is covered by the shawl. So what she does, she lowers the shawl and you can see her bottom. Now the best part of it was not that, but it was the theatrics of the show. As she walks away, all lights dim except one light that focuses on her bottom. So Terry Mugler basically shut down all the lights just so people can be like, hey, Look at that. So when you look at the stage, the only thing that you're going to see is this bottom, which is in the spotlight. This moment and this dress is known as derrière décolleté. I think that I pronounced that right. I really tried, I really tried. Which should translate to something like ass cleavage. <laughs> I cannot believe that I'm talking about this. <laughs> I translated that myself, which is... <laughs> So if it's wrong, I take 100% responsibility for this one. <laughs> and if you thought that this look is just it, I'll tell you what makes it even better. The set of string pearls that is above her bottom is actually supposed to reference the pearls that women would wear around their necks. So it looks like a cleavage. Also, if you haven't noticed, there is a flower below her bottom. Now, who brought this look as a reference was actually Cardi B. And I told you that her stylist Colin is a huge Cherry Mugler stan. For Halloween in 2022, Cardi B referenced Marge Simpson, but not just Marge Simpson, she referenced high fashion Marge Simpson. And they used this dress for this costume. And you can see actually the real picture of the dress which is right next to Cardi's shoulder. Next up we have another reveal from his 1998 Haute Couture Fall collection which was called As Big As The Ritz. The look starts with this faux fur coat with sequin and jet embroidery but the piece below is a piece that you definitely saw. It's this corseted extra fine net cast suit adorned with jet. Now, honestly, this is one of the sexiest looks I have ever seen in my life. And this model embodied this look. Plus, what I loved about her is the fact that she's a redhead. It made this look 10 times better. Now, let's move on to the next look. Honestly, side note, whenever I see this mask, I am so happy. I don't know why. For me, it's like a relic of fashion. And this look is from the 1995 collection. The mask was on a different look on the original runway. And it's a piece that has been instantly recognizable with Thierry Mugler. It's been worn by Georgina Greenwald to Eva Herzegova. But this mask just gives me true villain vibes. The look is a wool suit with riding coat jacket and gloved sleeves and draped micro skirt. The thing that definitely sells this look for me are the vinyl tights. If I was a villain in the movie, I would definitely go with this look. Did someone say slashed look, please? Well, do not worry, be because Terry Mugler had the same thought for his Spring Couture 1999 collection. And this is how the dress looked back in the day. And honestly, when you see this dress and other dresses that were in this collection, you can see the reference to today's Mugler by Casey, because I think it is heavily inspired by this exact collection. On the Couture look, you can see the threads that are holding this look together. Meanwhile, the Casey's Mugler relies more on transparent fabrics that give you the same effect and they're more adaptable to the body. Next up, babes, we have this gorgeous piece, and I believe this is a look from his spring-summer 1994 collection. And I cannot explain how much I love this look, honestly, especially the white collar that is the most sensual thing that I have seen ever. The look is giving me Alexis from Dynasty, and I believe the hat is from Philip Tracy's Mugler 1996 spring show. Then we have this lace dress from his fall 1995 collection. And my hair is giving you a little bit of Mugler right now, and we're going to fix it 
done. I swear his ready to wear fall 1995 had so many spectacular pieces and this lace dress is just one of them. The oversized flowers have this 3D effect on the dress. The only difference between the original dress and the one that you see here are the flowers on the shoulders, which are not seen in this exhibit, but to be honest, I do not mind at all. The simplicity and the details of this dress made this look a stunner. And the model that was wearing this look, her name is actually Nadia. And later during the same show, she's going to change into one of the most iconic Thierry Mugler pieces. As you know, sex was a huge factor in Mugler's work and it's pretty obvious when you see this form-fitting leather mini skirt with metal piercings from his Ready to Wear Spring 1994 collection. Honestly, I'm still shocked that no one pulled this look for a music video or appearance or something like that because this look 30 years later can pass as in today and I think that's a witness to how genius and forward-thinking Thierry Mugler was and I'm sure that this look was on many many mood boards when it came to many collections now for the next video if you have a gay man very close to you make sure he sees this part and he's probably going to whisper mother because if you're a Lady Gaga stan you're going to recognize this hat immediately and if you're not Lady Gaga stan I'm gonna break it down for you this hat is actually from the telephone music video that Lady Gaga did with Beyonce this is the scene where she gets released from jail and she is in head to toe in Thierry Mugler and both of the pieces are from fall 1995 collection a funny thing about this is that Lady Gaga stylist Nicola Formachetti eventually became a creative director for Mugler and the lick on a mannequin that you see in front of you is also from the 1995 collection i mean the shapes just look i mean to be honest no one does it like this anymore and it's so sad because it's been so many years that like no one is giving this energy if again if this exhibit gets to your town don't walk run sis run okay before i end this video i am going to encourage you to watch the second video that i'm going to make and i'm going to show you a couple of looks that we're going to talk about you will see references to lady gaga to beyonce and the most impressive and jaw-dropping looks of terry mugler like the butterfly look and of course, you know, we're going to talk about this look because this is one of his most recognizable looks. And there is pretty good stories about this one. Like the best of the best. With all that being said, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any other new videos that are coming your way. Again, thank you for watching. See you soon and stay amazing.